Welcome to the Billiard University, which offers assessment tools, a rating system, and learning resources to help graduate your game to the next level. This is an excerpt from the second DVD in the BU Instructional Video Series, which covers all of the topics shown here. The final drill in Exam 1 deals with cue ball position control. The goal is to pocket the object ball in the corner and send the cue ball to each of the five targets. You get four tries at each for a maximum possible score of 20. Here are the target positions at the table. One, two, three, four, and five. Note that the target is flush with the nose of the cushion when next to a rail. As with previous drills using the target, the cue ball must end up within or overlapping the outer rectangle. You must pocket the object ball and the cue ball must be on target. For example, on this shot, even though the cue ball position ends up good, the shot doesn't count because the object ball is not pocketed. Now let's look at example shot options for each target position starting with number one. The simplest option is just to slow roll the shot. If you want to avoid the risk of the edge of the rectangle pushing the cue ball out, you can use a little more speed. And if you want to increase the margin for error some, use right English to send the cue ball closer to the center of the target. You could also use a stun shot since the tangent line heads in a favorable direction. Here's another view. This approach offers a wide margin for error with speed. Even if I use very slow speed and most or all of the backspin wears off, the result is still as good as the slow roll shot. And with a lot more speed and stun, we still end up in the target. Here, the cushion helped kill the cue ball motion. One downside of using slow stun is that cut-induced throw is maximum under these conditions. And if cling were to occur, for example if a chalk smudge happens to end up at the cue ball object ball contact point, you might miss the shot. Using outside or right English with either the slow roll or a stun shot can be a good approach because it can reduce or even eliminate the risk of throw and cling. If you want a challenge, try the following alternative path to the target. Obviously, we wouldn't recommend this approach when taking the exam for your diploma, unless you want to show off. Now let's look at the second target position. One obvious approach here is to draw the cue ball straight to the target. This might look fairly straightforward, but it can be difficult to judge the exact amounts of speed and spin to be accurate and consistent. Another approach is to use less straw, which might be easier to control, and bounce off the side cushion. The cushion can help slow and flatten the path of the cue ball a little, which can increase the margin for error slightly. You could also use even less draw and come off the cushion on the near side of the side pocket. This doesn't offer the best angle into the target, but right English can help a little. The danger of targeting near the side pocket is that the cue ball might deflect off one of the points of the pocket if your aim is off slightly. A totally different approach for this shot is to come off the end rail with English. Before looking at this, let's first use the trisect system to see what is possible with good action draw. Remember, the total angle is three times the cut angle. And we can do a tangent line shift to account for the swing out due to the speed of the shot. So with good action draw, we can easily get to the end cushion on the shooter's side of the target. Notice how the left or clockwise spin changes the rebound angle off the cushion. To get a better line into the target, we just need to use a little less draw than the good action amount.
An advantage of this shot approach is that both the end and side cushions help kill the cue ball, providing a wide margin for error with speed. Here's an example illustrating this effect. Here's another view of a similar shot. One disadvantage of this approach is that if you don't have enough draw, you can scratch in the corner pocket. On the positive side, if you don't have enough draw or use too much speed, you can come up short of the corner and the method can still work. Here are two alternative paths to the target if you want some challenging shots to practice. These position routes are obviously not high percentage options, and results can vary significantly with different cloth and cushion conditions. The exact cue ball paths are also very sensitive to slight changes in speed, spin, and aim with pocket cheating. Regardless, they can be fun and educational. Now let's look at the third target position. The most reliable approach here is to roll the cue ball into the cushion with right English to create a natural, low effort path to the target. You could also use a stun shot with no English since the tangent line direction off the cushion is also fairly natural. However, this won't be as easy to control as the naturally rolling shot. For practice, you might also try a few alternative paths. Here are two reasonable options. Now let's look at the fourth target position. Here we can use a similar rolling cue ball path as we did for target position 3. We just need a little more English than before. You could also use a stun shot with a touch of right English, but this won't be as easy to control. Again, here are some alternative paths to practice. Now let's look at the fifth and final target position. This is a simple rolling cue ball follow shot. However, with no side spin, the cue ball tends to go wide of the target, especially at faster speeds. To target the center of the rectangle, you need to add a touch of reverse or left English. That was actually a hair more than necessary. It doesn't take much. There really aren't any reasonable alternative paths here, but you can try this one if you want. The Billiard University DVD series is a three volume set. Disc one reviews fundamentals and covers the exam process in detail, providing a complete how-to guide for getting a BU diploma. Disc 2 covers Exam 1, the Fundamentals Exam, in detail, providing instruction, hot tips, and examples. Disc 3 does the same for Exam 2, the Skills Exam, covering the Bachelor's, Master's, and Doctorate levels. For more information and to order DVDs, please visit the BU website. Randy and I want to send special thanks to the BU professors for their useful feedback while we were developing the BU exams and rating system. Their input as experienced and respected instructors was invaluable.